Okay, good morning everybody. This is Cruise Man. Welcome to the first and maybe the last comments and coffee, or is it coffee and comments? I don't know, coffee and comments with Cruise Man. And this is uh, Saturday morning. It's pretty early here. In fact, I've uh, got my coffee. And uh, this is a cool mug, by the way. This is a Ember mug. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of these, but they, uh, they actually keep the coffee hot. And they sit on a little recharging base. My brother gave me this for Christmas, and it's pretty cool. So for those of you who are coffee drinkers, and you're looking for a way to keep your coffee hot in the morning, take this in the office with you, or in this case, the studio. Um, this is uh, how you do it with the Ember. But what I want to do on this kind of a new format, and you're going to have to let me know in the comments if you like this or not. You know, it's wintertime, uh, sketchy weather, can't really ride and do a motor vlog. So I thought, you know, we can still sit around and talk a little bit about motorcycles and kind of our passion. And what I did is I took some of the comments that I've received from the uh, YouTube channel and the Facebook group and I just thought, you know, hey, I'll sit down. I'm going to read some of these comments and just kind of respond to them. Might be just an interesting way to, you know, sit down and have kind of a Saturday morning coffee chat and uh, you guys let me know what you think in the comments. If you hate this, we won't do it anymore. Uh, if you kind of like it, then we'll uh, continue to do it. But anyway, nevertheless, I appreciate you watching. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Cruise Man. Uh, Cruise Man's Garage is my business. We do videos for motorcycle maintenance and all kinds of reviews. And we have a YouTube channel and, and maintenance videos that we market and all that kind of stuff. So enough said. Appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you like this video, of course, like always, just give it a thumbs up. Now, let me have a quick drink and we'll get started. So this first message that I picked out of the group was from Henry Fortis. And by the way, I appreciate all the guys, all of you uh, guys and gals, ladies, gentlemen, that put <clears throat> messages in on the YouTube channel and the Facebook group. And this is from Henry Fortis. He says, Happy New Year to you. Make want to get... Some of these are hard to read. Happy New Year to you. To you make want to get a trike Goldwing, you should do some video on Goldwing trikes also. Uh, okay, the, the gist of this is more videos on trikes. Um, well, Henry, thank you for the comment. Um, it's a little tough because I don't have access to a trike. I don't know anybody that has a trike. Um, they're very, I wouldn't say they're rare, uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, they're pretty rare. I haven't seen that many trikes around. Even when I go to Dream Machines of Texas, it took me quite a while uh, to find a trike to do a video on. A couple of years ago, I did one for F4 Customs. So um, I'd be more than happy to you know make a video on trikes. I'm not a trike expert. There's several brands out there of trikes. I don't know enough about all of them to really uh, speak intelligently about it. So. Uh, I'm, there may be a trike channel. I'm not sure if there's a, a Facebook group just for Goldwing trikes, uh, but uh, maybe you could research that. The second comment is from Flyboy1Ron. One, one Ron. Happy New Year. Cru These came in right after New Year's. Happy New Year, Cruise Man. Thanks for all the videos talking about the real Cruise Man. Maybe one day you can compile a blooper video that might be interesting. Ride safe in 2021. Well, Flyboy, you ride safe too. Um, I actually do have some blooper content. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that YouTube would uh, uh, demonetize my channel or eliminate the channel altogether if I put some of that stuff on the air. When you're working on a motorcycle and you get frustrated, which I do, uh, thank you for that. I, I'm considering it. I, I've, it. Some of it's pretty embarrassing, So, uh, but I guess that's the whole point of a blooper video. Anyway, thanks for the comment. Uh, Jeff Ray, uh, he comments, I get, I get several of these comments. Apparently, I was on a highway or something, and he said, you let an 18-wheeler pass you? LOL. Well, Jeff, 
Yes. Uh, this is Dallas-Fort Worth. I was probably riding in the Metroplex, or I may have even been on the way back or on the way to Midland or something. Um, I am a fairly conservative rider. Um, not here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I call it the uh, Carrollton International Speedway, which is 121. And it's pretty, pretty common for everybody here to drive 80, 85 miles an hour. And I'm just not real comfortable uh, riding that fast on two wheels with a three inch contact patch between me and the ground. Uh, some of you guys do, I know you think I'm a wimp. Uh, that's fine. You ride your ride, I ride my ride. But uh, I, I don't have any ego involved here. If an 18 wheeler passes me, uh, so be it. So anyway, uh, I appreciate the comment though, and I get I get a quite a few people that notice that uh, you know I'm in the right lane. I'm letting cars and vehicles pass me on the left quite a bit. Um, you know I am motor vlogging at the same time, so it does take some concentration. So I'm trying to. Uh, just be as safe as possible while still maintaining a, a safe speed. I typically around town will drive 65, maybe 70. Um, I also had an incident a few years ago where I hit a piece of road debris going about 70 miles an hour and uh, did some pretty major damage to my motorcycle and I was very, very lucky. So if I'd been going 80 or 85 when I hit that, uh, we probably wouldn't be having this chat this morning. Okay, one from Ken Mead. This one's kind of small, hard to read. I, I printed these out. Would installing these on my 2020 DCT affect the factory warranty or an extended warranty? Now he's referring to the Remus uh, Performance Sport Exhaust System. It's a very good question. Let me tell you my experience with Honda warranty. A lot of it depends on the dealer and the service manager at the dealership. I would guess that it probably would not affect the warranty. That would be my guess. However, if you have a Honda dealer with a really uh, jerk service manager, he can probably use any excuse he wants to to deny a warranty claim and, and just say that Honda denied the claim. Um, I'm guessing that an aftermarket exhaust system, 90% of the dealers and the service techs would not even notice that you had it on there. Now, when it comes to something that's modifying the actual performance of the engine, such as modifying your ECM. If you send your ECM off to Google Motors or one of these companies to actually change the ECM uh, so that you're changing around you know, air fuel mixtures and shift points and all these things, that would definitely void your warranty if the Honda service tech knew that you had had it done. It would be very difficult for them to even make that determination unless they sent your ECM off to Honda and they could actually maybe investigate, look inside the code and see what's going on. So that's why on my 2012 Goldwing, I did have the ECM reflashed. And the first thing I did was take the little sticker off from Google Motors. I didn't want anybody, you know, the Honda service tech to know uh, that I had uh, had that ECM modified. And in most cases, it would never make a difference. You're probably worrying about something that's never going to happen. From David Simmons, hey, Cruise Man, have you re reviewed the Two Brothers system? Um, no, I have not. I've reached out to Two Brothers back when they first announced this, uh, their exhaust. And the person that replied did respond very nice. And I it was my understanding they were going to send me uh, an exhaust system to review and do a video for them, but uh, they never, that's the last I ever heard of it. It never happened. Apparently, at the time I reached out, uh, they were kind of falling behind in production. I think it was a new product and they were, they were, they were getting orders and they were trying to fill all their orders, but uh, it just never came to pass. And this brings up that the question, which I get all the time. 
I just simply don't have time to sit and send emails out to every company to review their products. I mean, sometimes I do reach out to companies, sometimes they reach out to me, it's a mix. But uh, on something like this, uh, I did reach out, there was a communication, I think I even replied back with a second, like a follow-up to see where we were, and it just never happened. So if you want to see a review, of the two brothers exhaust system i'll be more than happy to do it uh, maybe if you're a customer of theirs you can reach out to them and tell them hey get in touch with cruise man see about a review steve 413 said looking forward to your videos in the new year by the way i was looking for your signature hat on teespring but couldn't find it nor on your amazon site is it available okay let me ask you a question um, any of you out there interested in these caps? Not just this. This is the legacy logo, kind of the standard Cruise Man's Garage logo. But if you're interested in having a cap with the new logo, um, let me know in the comments down below because I'm looking at a couple of different cap companies. And if that's something you're interested in, uh, you're going to have to let me know in fair, fairly good numbers because you have to order like a hundred of these at a time. So I'd have to know that a lot of people were interested in these caps before I go out and invest the money and the time to have them made. But I am working on that. Okay, Roger Hart. I purchased seven items that you reviewed last year. Thanks and Happy New Year. Well, Roger, that's great. Uh, make sure to let the, the vendors that made those products know that you uh, that my reviews influenced your decisions when companies have a product they want uh, as much exposure as they can get and many of them see cruise man's garage youtube channel as a good way for their product to receive good reviews good information out to the consumers and now that we're up around twenty nine thousand uh, getting close to thirty thousand subscribers uh, we have a, you know, it's a small channel by by comparison to a lot of other channels on YouTube, but it's a very niche-oriented channel. So we're highly targeted, highly focused on the motorcycle market, uh, and, and even more, a little more focused on maybe even the Goldwing market at this point. Even though we have a lot of non-Goldwing owners and riders that are, are on our channel, so uh, thank you for the purchases. I'm glad uh, the reviews helped. Steve Moore. Didn't we do Steve Moore before? I'm not sure. What do you think about disabling the anti-dive valve on the 01 to 17, 2017 Goldwing? Uh, I don't have a problem with it. I did it on mine. I had the anti-dive valve uh, disabled on my 2007 and my 2012 Goldwing. And for those of you, for those of you that don't know what the anti-dive valve is, it is on the left side of the front fork and basically it's a uh, by Honda's uh, the design the engineer the idea was that when you're under hard braking it would um, prevent the front forks from collapsing it would basically uh, prevent a dive a nose dive of the bike under hard braking and the Honda engineers felt like they've such a heavy motorcycle that they wanted to prevent as much dive as possible so they put in this anti-dive valve, which is a hydraulic uh, valve that kind of routes some of the uh, uh, fluid from the suspension system and, and kind of locks it in place. And a lot of people disable it. And the reason they disable it is because if you're under braking or even if you just go over some railroad tracks under some sort of braking, it makes the uh, impact very violent because you don't have any suspension. It's basically like you're, you're riding a rigid front-end bike. So disabling that anti-dive valve, it will, uh, you know, your, your front end will, will tend to dive a little more under braking, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I would check with Max at Traction Dynamics. He knows everything there is to know about suspension. I'm pretty sure that Max, when he installs his system, um, on the 2001 to 2017 Goldwings, he always disables that anti-dive valve, I believe. Okay, let's go on to Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Guy is, I guess he means me. Guy is so incredibly boring, dull, and drab. Good to listen to 
if you need help falling asleep. I didn't know. My girlfriend went under the name Led Zeppelin. But anyway, uh, Led, you know, thanks for your comment. I get stuff like that quite often, believe it or not. Okay, Tommy Craft. Again, a question about the Remus exhaust. What mode was the bike in when the video was made? Sometimes I was in sport mode. Most of the time I was in manual because I wanted to be able to get those RPMs up and I wanted to be able to control where the shift points were. So most of it was done in manual and some of it was done in sport mode. Um, tour mode seemed to shift too quickly uh, to really get the sound that I wanted to get out of that exhaust system. Okay, winging it with John. Uh, winging it with jo John. John uh, puts in co quite a few comments. I see his name pop up a lot. Time for a new back tire. Will you go dark side? Uh, it is time for a new back tire. Actually, I'm going to get my new tires put on. I've already got a set in the garage, and I use Bridgestones. Um, I probably I will not go dark side. Um, it's not that I don't think there's some validity to going dark side. I just haven't found that for me there's a big advantage. Um, I, I, ha I don't have strong opinions on dark siding one way or the other. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing for some people. I think if you do a lot of straight riding on the highway, uh, you know, it's probably fine. I, I just don't. I just don't see it. I, 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 motorcycle tires are made for motorcycles, and they're there for a reason. They're made that way for a reason. They don't have a sidewall, a, you know, a, a, that profile uh, for a reason. So um, I probably will not go dark side. You know, the cost of tires is ex they're expensive, and dark siding is definitely a cheaper way to go. But um, I've just I've heard too many stories that kind of make me shy away from it. But I have no problem if somebody wants to go dark side. That's fine. Thank you, John, for the question. Uh, Alex Boatsman, anyone have a video how to bleed? I think this came from Facebook. Anyone have a video of how to bleed brake and clutch fluid on a GL1800? Yes, uh, I have those videos in my either the 2001 to 2017 or the 2018 plus Goldwing maintenance video series. I show in detail how you bleed the clutch and bleed the brakes. And uh, so, Alex, if you are looking for those videos, I go into great detail on that. Perry James Gordon, is it okay to post something for sale on this site or where do I? This is another Facebook post from the Facebook groups. And if you're not part of our Facebook groups, we have one specifically for the 2018 Plus Goldwing. We have another group that covers virtually any year model Goldwing. Ah, it keeps it so hot. It's amazing. I love it. My coffee would already be cold now. Uh, the answer to Perry's question, yes, you can post personal things for sale on the Facebook groups. These Facebook groups are owned and operated, you might say, uh, by Cruise Man's Garage, which is a business. And we're there to, to not only provide good information, but to promote our own products and our own videos and things like that. So as long as you're not posting a commercial uh, thing for sale, uh, like if you have a seat that you're selling or a windshield you're selling, you're more than welcome to post that. Uh, as long as it's not a business posting something. I get a lot of people, and I'll point this out right now, I get a lot of people posting t-shirts for sale, like Honda Goldwing logos on them and things like that. And those come off immediately. People join these groups just so they can sell their t-shirts. And I'm not going to allow that. That's just not, that's not what we're here for. That's not, this is not the place for that. There are websites out there where you can post those things. Uh, but as long as you have something personal for sale, feel free. Barry Trimble. No, still not a fan of changing the speakers. Is not upgrading the sound system. Side bags should have also been upgraded. I have a 2014, will not trade in for this. I, he's referring to the 2021 Goldwing. For a while, Honda dealership here had to knock a lot of money off the 2018 uh, to get them off the floor. They didn't even order the 2019s. Honda needs to make a long distance bike or a classic Goldwing. Well, Barry, that's not gonna happen. Uh, I'm not sure about your dealer that you're referring to, 
Uh, I know some dealers that they can't keep the 2018, 2019s in stock. So they're selling as fast as they can. Some dealers just are not gold wing dealers. They sell a few gold wings a year. Uh, there are other dealers that are high volume gold wing dealers and trust me, they are selling. In fact, right now it's almost impossible to find a 2018 or 2019 brand new on the showroom. Maybe not find a 2000. There weren't many 2020s made because of the pandemic. Nevertheless, Honda's not going to change this design. This is a direction they're going to go. Um, it's hard to do larger saddlebags on this bike because you have a tip over issue. Uh, if you tip the bike over, you're going to saddlebags are going to hit the ground. So if you increase the size of the saddlebags, you're also going to have to increase the size of the engine guards or the guards that come out of the mufflers. That's going to cause issues. Um, but I'm happy that they increase the size of the trunk. I think that itself is pretty special. I can't wait to see it in person. Kenneth Richardson replied to your reply uh, on Mike Gunsellis comment. Cruise Man's Garage, Honda should give you a long-term loan or Goldwing each year for review. You're the reason I went out and bought a new 2020 DCT Tour. I absolutely love it. My last bike was a KTM 1290 Super Duke R. Well, Kenneth, I agree. I think Honda should give me a new Goldwing every year to ride um, because I've, I've seen at least two or three dozen messages just like yours that said people who went out and bought a Goldwing because they've watched my videos. But Kenneth, also I can guarantee you Honda is not going to give me a Goldwing to ride every year. Uh, I'm lucky that they're going to let me come up to Oklahoma to review one. So anyway, those are the comments that uh, I'm, I've gone through this week. There's a couple other things I'm going to mention because uh, I've had so many people mention this. People have asked this question. I didn't pick out a specific comment. I've just had many people ask this. Will the 2021 trunk fit on a 2018 or 2019 or 2020 Goldwyn? Now, we don't know for sure yet. I suspect yes. I would suspect the 2021 trunk will fit. I doubt that Honda made any structural changes to the subframe. They may have made it a different subframe for the bigger trunk, but we'll have to wait and see. The real question is this, will Honda offer the larger trunk in the previous year model colors? And my guess is, and it's just a guess, is no. They're not going to uh, cannibalize the sale of the 2021 Goldwing just to satisfy the 2018 to 2020 customers. So the idea of improving these things along the way is so that you will trade in or sell your earlier model and move up to the 2021. I doubt they will offer it in different colors. Now you could purchase one and you could take it to a painter and have it painted to match your bike, but you're talking about a chunk of coin to do that. Will Honda offer a kit? I think that's the same question. Uh, and a lot of people keep making comments about the 2021 pricing. They say the prices are too high. My opinion is, uh, if you're ever considering buying a Goldwing, now is probably the time to do it. Um, I don't think there's er prices aren't ever going to come down. I can guarantee you that. And you, we're entering a time now in our country where I think we're going to start seeing a lot of price increases go up. We know we're going to be paying more in taxes. Uh, we know that the energy sector is kind of a target of this administration, which means energy prices are going to go up. So I've already seen prices for gas in Texas already rising just in anticipation of this. And I suspect, it's just a prediction on my part, you're going to see five to seven dollar gallon gas in Texas. Now I know you already see it in California, but I think we're going to see five to seven dollar gallon gas probably by the end of this year, first part of next year. Now what that means is the price of everything's going to go up because when energy prices go up, every factory that manufactures everything, every delivery company like FedEx, their costs go up and that gets passed on to consumers. 
So prices are going to start rising pretty dramatically. Uh, corporate taxes will also cause prices to rise. Uh, a higher minimum wage is going to cause prices to rise. So what I'm saying is the percentage of money that you have right now, whatever that is, compared to the cost of a gold wing, you probably have a better uh, a better ratio now than you're ever going to have because this time next year, you're going to probably have less money to spend. Even if the gold wing price is the same, you're going to be spending a lot more in other areas. So that's just my personal opinion. You can take it for what it's worth. But my, my thinking is this. <clears throat> if you want a gold wing and it's kind of the dream bike for you, go buy it now. Don't wait. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll look back and say, why didn't I buy it when I had the chance? So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I just call it comments and coffee or coffee and comments. You let me know what you think the name should be. And maybe every Saturday or every other Saturday, we'll sit down. I'll go through the comments on YouTube and pick out some of the ones I think are interesting that make good topics for conversation. Put your comments in on this video too. And I will see you on the next Coffee and Comments. Thank you.